Hello, this is Richard Thorne, and welcome to the third part of our series of the Miccosukee people of Florida. In this part, we're going to look at the folklore of the, the Miccosukee people as told to school teacher J.E. Lazell in 1911 by Jim Gopher, who was a Miko of the group that was become the Miccosukee. The first part is entitled The Good God and the Bad God, Creation of Animals and Mankind. There were two gods, Tuchipa, the good god, and Hokodmatu, the bad god. One day they came to earth. It was very new, and there was no animals on it, no fish in the waters, no birds in the trees, and the clouds were still lying on the ground. Tuchipa and Hokodmatu started to walk about the earth to see if they could make it a pleasant place for them to live in, but the clouds got out of the way of their feet, and the clouds concealed their view as far as they could reach. After they had fixed the clouds up in the sky, and saw how beautiful the world was, Tuchipa, the good god, said to Hokumantu, Why don't we make some living things to dwell on this beautiful place? Hokumantu, being a bad god, thought it was too much trouble to do anything as good as that, but he said to Tuchipa, Do it yourself if you want to, thinking that he would wait and see what the animals look like. Perhaps it could make them bad and make them worship him instead of Tuchipa. Tuchipa was very much pleased and started right away to make the animals birds and fish. He made them all good. They all talked the same talk, played together, and were friends. He made male and female of each kind, and he made the red wolf, the wise animal, who should give advice and counsel the rest of the animals. He called his canine companion Kamaahi. He would take his friend with him whenever he walked about the earth and talk with him. He learned from the red wolf that all other animals were talking about and thinking and wanting. For Tuchipa wanted all his creatures to be happy. One day, Kanahi, the red wolf, said to Tuchipa, Oh, Tuchipa, why don't you make another animal in your own shape? Smaller, of course, but still look like you. Then when you're away on a far journey, I could have someone to talk to and take counsel with. The idea pleased Tuchipa. He right away made a man and called him Katiti Kamehahi, which means taught by the red wolf. For it was arranged that Red Wolf should take the man and introduce him to all he knew about the world and everything in it. Katahiti Kanahi, the first man, was very strong and handsome and good, and he learned quickly and grew more and more each day to look and talk like Tuchipa. He loved all the animals and they loved him, and at first he was very happy. By and by, though, he noticed that all the other animals had mates. They were all in couples and little animals are coming, and the animal fathers and mothers was very happy and busy with their children, and he began to wonder why he, of all animals, was all alone without any mate. The first man began to feel lonely, seeing the happiness of the others, and he spoke to Red Wolf and said, Why can't I have a mate and so on little ones? Please ask the good god Tuchipa to let me have a mate to love and be mother of some little men and women. And while you are asking them that, please ask him if I could not have also a few friends like myself in the image of Tuchipa. The wise red wolf saw Tuchipa soon after and told him what Katahiti Kanahiti said. The good god laughed and said, I made only one of him because there is only one of me, but I suppose he is lonesome, and so I'll tell him how to get a mate and also some friends. Send Katahiti Kanahiti to me. The gods create a house for man. The red wolf did send a man to the good god. Then Tuchipa, hidden from sight, speaking to the man from the top of a lofty mountain, said, Kathiti Kanahi, first man created by me. I have heard your prayer and I will answer. Go to a place which I shall tell the red wolf and which he will direct you. There build a stone house of four walls, but with only one door and no roof so that the sun might, might reach in their very part. Then go into the forest, cut ten logs of goodly thickness, and as long as your own height. Take these with the walls of the stone house you have built, and lay them on the ground in a row. Then cut eleven logs of a lesser thickness, and of a length reaching to your chin, as they stand on end. Place these in, in another row within the house. Then cut ten logs of less, still lesser thickness, and half as long as the first logs, and place them in another row inside the walls, and then cut still another ten, half the length of the second row of logs, and still smaller thickness than the others. Six days shall finish your labors, 
and on the seventh day you must rest and do no kind of work. Warn the red wolf that he nor any animal, bird nor fish shall make a noise of any kind to disturb the work, which I, Tuchipa, shall do this seventh day, which is my day. Let it be known that this is my wish. Obey, and all will be well. The man arose from his knees, and in fear of the great voice, he went in search of the wise friend, the red wolf, thankful in his heart. Kanaihi took him to a spot on the shore of the river, and for the time of six days and nights, he worked and cut the logs and put them in a row, according to their size, all carefully laid in a stone house. In this word, they grew more and more interested every day until... The morning of the seventh day, when the first man, obeying Tuchipa, was asleep and resting quietly. The red wolf could not resist the temptation to peep into the house where the logs lay, bathing in the warmth of the sun. We took his breath away. The logs were slowly changing. First they split halfway up, then a knob grew on the upper end, then they split apart on each side, the pieces growing slowly into the arms, the lower parts of the legs, the knobs in the head, until by and by, Fully formed, men and women, boys and girls, took their places where the first logs of each size lay. Then they began to move and sit up, roll their eyes, and then to stand, until the room inside the walls got so crowded that some of the living men, women, and children were forced against the logs that were still changing. When the Red Wolf saw this, he went loco, got crazy, and howled with fear. His howl woke the man who quickly kicked the red wolf for breaking the command of Tuchipa for making a noise on the seventh day. And that is why the red wolf is ever seen by a man with his tail between his legs. With the howl of the red wolf, the log stopped changing. Then Kathihiti Kanahaha, the man, picked himself a mate and never was lonely anymore, for he had friends of his own kind and children of his own, just like the other animals, and that's how people came on earth. In the sunlight's growth filtering through the pine trees, Lazelle mused on the strange similarity between the legend and the biblical story. Six days of creation, the one set apart for quietness and rest. Just as he sat musing on this, the voice of someone cut the silence with, Say, Jim, what became of the logs that were left over? Jim, with scorn in his face, said, Bark all came off. Rot, no good. Ochimatu, bad god, made white man of these. And that ends our series on the Mikasiki. Thank you for joining us as we move about the southeast and, and study the indigenous peoples of our nation. Have a good day.